There's signs of something where the intake manifold meets the head. Um, okay, we're gonna have to think about that. I don't. I... Hello everybody and welcome. This is the Influenza, the once upon a time cheap Ferrari, which has just had blood, sweat and tears poured into it. It's had a top end rebuild, but it is now burning oil. Before this video really gets going, I think it's important to clarify a couple of points. The guys who rebuilt the heads on the Influenza have been really, really helpful. I've spoken to David again recently. He is absolutely convinced that there isn't a problem with the heads and I do not doubt, I do not doubt that. The reason why I am going through this fault finding is because it is interesting to see. This is a car that you've all been following. We've been, it's, we've been on a journey together and it's interesting to try and see what's going on with the symptoms of this oil burning. The truth is that the most likely thing on an old engine on which the heads have been renewed is that it is a problem with the rings. But it's going to be interesting to see, to try and find out as much as I can in the meantime. The Influenza has now been standing for a few days. So I'm going to take a look inside the bores and see what we can see at this stage. I'm also going to take it for a run and also then see what it does on deceleration and so on with the rear facing camera, how much it's smoking and when. And as soon as I get back, once it's been for a run, I'm going to have another look inside those bores and see what they can show us. Lastly, I think I'm going to be able to go up through the carbs and look down into the inlet valves to see the state of the top of the inlets and see if I can see any oil coming down from there. I've done a bit of research on this because I did have an old Draper endoscope um, but it had a tiny little screen and I tried looking in there and I just couldn't see anything. And what's come up that for decent reasonable money this is the best gadget that I've found. This is a depth tech uh, and it hooks up to your phone. So already you have the brilliant sort of screen from your iPhone which the other cameras that you buy won't have a screen as good as that. And this is 5 megapixel resolution so it's HD. Um, so we should get a good picture of what's going on. Okay, so let's start off with cylinder four. Okay, so the bigger valve recess, which I think is the intake, looks completely clean. But that smaller valve indentation there, which I think is for the exhaust valve, that definitely looks like it's um like it's got a little pool of oil in it so let's have a quick look at these number three and two now these this they're much further up so in order to be able to see that cars in gear i'm going to push it forward and get those pistons to drop sufficiently so i can see them there we go so again looks very clean on the is that the inlet I think but on the exhaust side definitely looks like there's oil pooling there okay and again very clean on that side but actually it's not that's definitely not as bad as the other two but looks like there's traces of, is that oil though yeah I think it is well, those endoscope clips showing that there is oil in the cylinders sitting on top of the pistons when the car's been there for a while would normally indicate that the oil should be coming from above, but I'm really not convinced about that, and there's a few reasons. First of all, where the oil is pooling, which is in the exhaust valve recess, well, the piston is at an angle anyway. Um, the Well, the cylinder is at an angle anyway, so any oil would end up at that point anyhow. So it is conceivable that if the oil is lining the cylinder walls, it is then sort of slowly falling down and pooling in that place. Um, so, yeah, so definitely need to look at things more. But it, but it is interesting to see that it's doing that. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start up the Influenzo and just let it run. And we can time and see how long it takes, because it does smoke on startup, how long it takes and make sure that the oil does eventually clear. It's a bit hard. 
braking because actually the Influenza is driving so well. It's um, the steering is so good now. And when I went to see Ian, he was absolutely right that something wasn't quite right with it. I had a look and I lubricated it, but then I found out what it was and it's got the collapsible nut that allows the steering to collapse in the event of a crash. That had gotten loose, so there was some play in the steering. Now that that's tightened up, it is amazing. There's absolutely no slack in it. I'm getting great feel. It is lovely. Anyway, back to this issue. So if we get it into second gear, I'll do a pull, then I'll let off the gas, then I'll get the gas back on and we'll see what we can see from that rear facing camera. see what this is showing as soon as possible now that we're back. I'm worried that it's too hot for the camera but okay so there's no oil there. That's cylinder three. Cylinder two. Now for cylinder four let me bump look out forward a bit. Cylinder four, the top of it actually looks like it's got a sheen of oil. Um, I think that's the worst cylinder really. As is often the case with the Influenza, I would say that that is inconclusive. So yes, um, two, two of the pistons actually, or two of the cylinders, were wet with oil. I said one was dry when really it wasn't. I looked back at the footage afterwards and it looks like there's already oil on there. There was less than before, that's true, and one of them did look drier. But if the oil is coating the walls of the cylinders, it will take a while to drop down and pull over there, which would explain why that happens once you've left the car for a bit. Okay, next I want to see what we can see going through the butterflies and to see the back of the intake valve. Okay, so there is the intake valve. Actually looks pretty clean. There's no sign of oil there, for sure. Okay, let's try on the other cylinder. Oh. Okay, so this is cylinder three. There's signs of oil there, but... Okay, cylinder number two. signs of something yeah there's definitely no sign of oil there you can see that quite clearly on this one where could it be coming from but
Um, okay, we're going to have to think about that. I, 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 that was weird. It looks like there's signs of something where the intake manifold meets the head, but I don't believe there should be any oil going through the there. That's just coolant. Well, that residue on the intake manifold had me completely stumped initially, but I actually, I've worked out what's going on and it's a complete red herring. So it looks like there's oil staining there, but first of all, that oil staining is going upwards. It's going towards the carbs, so it can't possibly be the oil that's going into the cylinders. Secondly, I remembered when I rebuilt the thing that actually the intake manifolds had some light corrosion inside them. It's pretty light staining really, but I think in the endoscope it just looks very much like oil, but it really isn't. So that's not the issue. What I was able to do with the endoscope for the intake valves, uh, did I say exhaust before? Intake valves, is that I was able to go up through the carbs, through the intake manifold, and then put the endoscope here where the valve sits and have a look at the top of the valve. Clearly those valves are completely clean. Um, you can see on the valve guides as well, there's no oil coming through there, so that's not the issue. I can't do the same trick with the exhaust valves here because, well, for two reasons really. First of all, the exhaust manifold is in the way. Secondly, it would be absolutely pointless because with the combustion going out through the exhaust, it's gonna be blowing loads of oil through there anyway, so it really wouldn't tell me anything. I think the next stage, considering that the inlet valves all look great, I really am starting to think that although a lot of the symptoms do point normally to like a top end oil um, coming down from the top end, I do think that it's, it's, it's more likely that it is those rings. So I think that for the next episode, what we will try and do is that I'm going to put some additives in the oil and see if they do anything in terms of cleaning it up because often what happens with those rings is that they gum up they stop turning properly because over time very slowly they sort of move and turn round on the piston but essentially they gum up and they just stop doing their job so they allow a film of oil to remain on the cylinder wall if you get some proper additives they can help sort of clean those up and maybe improve it um, that may be, that may well be wishful thinking. And, you know, at some point it may be that I have to take this engine apart again. In the meantime, it is running really well. I do have to keep an eye on oil consumption and so on, but at least, at least the car does run. As I've mentioned before, please don't start speculating about the heads. The guys who did them have been really helpful with me. Um, they've also offered, if I do end up taking it apart, they'll look it through, through with me. And I just, I don't think this is, this is where the oil is coming from. You may have noticed that the Influenza is actually no longer misfiring, and that's because I have used a lower grade of plug. So obviously they're not getting gummed up with oil as soon as the other one. So it is actually pretty, it's pretty usable as it is, which is good because I'm not gonna rebuild it for a few months. I'm actually gonna use it. Anyway, Thank you all so much for watching as always. I really appreciate it. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're interested in what I'm doing. If you need to contact me, Instagram is the best way. And I really look forward to seeing you for the next video when uh, we'll see if any of these sort of old cures to try and clean the rings, see if they have any effect at all.